You've been wrestling bears, freestyle wrestling. 12 years professional MMA, 12 years, you know. Yeah, it's almost like you want to Too expand much. and obviously you're with the royal family. I mean, obviously- Entrepreneurship, you're... it's time for entrepreneurship. That's where he's at now, Mike. Businessman. Yeah. Business is much better than fights. You agree? Yeah. I don't know, you also don't have to go to the hospital after it, but I love fighting <laughs> too. So what's up everybody? Welcome to this episode of Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson. I am your co-host Triple C, aka Henry Cejudo. And I'm Mike Tyson. And this special guest we have today is the most specialist guest we had since we've been here. And this is the great Khabib. What's up, everybody? Come on, man. Let's give a round of applause, people. 29 and 0, retired as a pound for pound king. Hey, man, what are you doing with your life now, man? How you doing? I'm good. You know, I'm here in LA uh, with my team. I have three guys fighting tomorrow and uh, just come here to support them. You know, I'm. So that's all you want to do? You want to train now? You don't want to fight anymore? No, I train every day. I train every day like I used to, like all my life. You know, I cannot stop training. This is give me good energy every day, you know. If I'm not training and I think like I have to do something, you know. Uh, about competition, yeah, I'm done. You know, we all miss you, right? <laughs> Everybody misses you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Is it, was it hard for you, Khabib, to say goodbye to the sport of mixed martial arts? Or you've been do he's been doing this since he was a kid, Mike. Wrestling bears to he, he retired in his prime. I think I think this is it was like my hardest hardest decision in my life, you know, to stop doing this. And uh, you know, it's like uh, when I remember, I like I find myself on the mats, you know, and uh, all my life, I was training, I was preparation for something like since when I was kid, and. Now when I finish like half year ago, like every every day I go to the training and I do something because I know I have competition. When I was a kid, I beginning like in freestyle wrestling, then I moved to judo, combat sambo, MMA. I doing like all, almost 13 years, last 13 years professional. And all my life, I was doing something like preparing for somebody, <clears throat> for some amateur fights, amateur wrestling or professional MMA, you know, it's like, but right now it's like, it's a little bit hard for me, you know, like without competition. But you know, it's like when you finish, you finish, you know. Yeah, but I don't think you finish. I think you chose to be finished. I don't think you're not finished because someone can beat you. You finish because um, you lost interest in the sport, right? No. I think between, between my retirement and your retirement, Retirement, I think this is too big difference. I think. Because, Tell me like, why. When you when you retired, I think like almost four years. Almost four no, years. Mike, I, Mike's no. still fighting. I'm still fighting. <laughs> no, no. no, I'm talking about high level. I'm oh, talking 17, about high level. 17 years ago. <laughs> no, I talk about high level. 17 but, years ago. But, but I'm even, getting I'm getting more money than the champions, though. It is high level, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> Mike's a businessman. Could be uh, he's a businessman. Okay, T tell us a little bit about your 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 childhood. Could be you know obviously growing yeah. up in the mountains of Dagestan. Dagestan. I, mean, I mean obviously I've been there before. You've been there too, Mike. You know, everywhere like in the southern caucus of of Russia. You know, in Mahachkala, uh, Dagestan, Chechnya, that whole area, man. They're just they're you guys are bred into being champions, man. Mm -hmm. You guys have a a great system, man. What was it like growing up? As a kid, as a, as as a Dagestani kid, in uh in, in that time during that time, I think this is because of very hard life. There's, like first of all, it's very hard life, and second, I think people in that uh, area like uh, they just love competition. They this is like inside their blood, you know, like all like like you thousands. Guys do, you guys do falcons too, huh? Mm, not too much. Not too, not much. too much. I no, went to Kazakhstan. No. Falcons. No, they 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 do they do like with falcons, but we hunt with our like hands, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no falcons, you know. And I think like because of this area, like uh, like thousands of years, you know, they competition with someone because of uh, uh, 
like because of this place, like where this place right now, like because of geography, like everything, I think uh, this is our in inside our blood and uh, like uh, and very hard life. If you wanna, if you wanna become on some levels, you have to, you have to become success somewhere. You know, if we talk about like business, this is very hard. In that area, become, become like a success businessman. This is very hard. Like about sport, why not? So, this so growing up, Khabib, was your, was your dad, was your dad always? Because obviously, your dad was your dad. Your dad was your coach. Your dad was your friend. Did your dad play all those roles with you? Like, you know, it's like my dad, he was like completely different person than everybody I know. Like, like, you know, it's like he tried to put me like on fire all the time. Like always, you know, like, like yesterday when you come, <laughs> when you come, when, when. Check this out, check this yeah, out. Like man. yesterday he, he come to check our training. We just finished with Zubaira and, uh, and, uh, you know, it's like, and I say like Z before Zubaira talk about, I can beat Henry Sehuda on wrestling match. And I, I, am, I was like, okay, Henry, you here? <laughs> and I say, Zubaira, you have to check this guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I make them wrestling, you know? Yeah. Like, all the time when me and my father, like, we go somewhere, like, doesn't matter, like, uh, somewhere house, like, friend's house, or somebody come to our house. If I see someone, like, almost my, my, my size, and I, I look at him, like, to my enemy, you know? Because I knew my father gonna make me wrestling with him, you know? It was like all my life. So then part of what, because you know? check this out, uh, Mike. So I went over there because I, I brought some barbers and friends that they're big fans of uh, Khabib. And I brought them over there. I was like, no, dude, these dudes flew down because they knew we were having the podcast, you know what I mean, to meet Khabib. So then I, I, I saw Zubaira on the bottom. I said, hey, man, where <laughs> you guys at? Like, you know, I, I, want, I got some friends. And I get up there and Khabib's like, oh, yeah, you want a picture for your friends? He's like, then you have to wrestle Zubaira. <laughs> so I'm in like dress clothes. I just got done smoking, smoking two blunts, you know, a beer. You know what I'm saying, Mike? Feeling good. And uh, feeling good. I'm just like, you know, next you know, dude, I'm in the underwear. It's like freaking wrestling this dude in front of everybody. But I I saw a little bit of what you're talking about with your dad. I can only picture your dad being that. So you didn't mention him when we're older. Because he got on me. He was like, no, you want a picture? You're going to wrestle. <laughs> I'm like, these dudes flew all. I'm like, I have to. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no other, there's no other way. It's great country. experience, though. Yeah. Look, look, looking back at your childhood now, could be. Do you feel like that's what's made you to the person that you are today? Uh, <clears throat> like, I think everything about discipline, everything about discipline, and every day, and every day, every day, like you know, train, sleep, eat, repeat. Like I think, like you guys understand me. Like you, especially you, Mike. You guys, like one of the greatest athletes of all times. So you gotta no. breathe it, live it. You yeah, be the champ before you become the champ. You have the lifestyle. Yeah, it's it's have to become your lifestyle and everything here in mental. You know, yeah. everything about mental. You know, it's like, like people ask me like, uh, when you become champion, what you feel like, and I said, no. In my mind, I was always champion. In my mind. All the time when I see someone compete, like in my weight classes, and I think, okay, like since when I like, you when UFC signed me, it was like 2012, 2013, 14, like that time, I would think about, I'm gonna beat these guys. I'm gonna, I can beat all of them. You know, like everything about mental. So like, like what you said, Mike, you have to be it before you come, before yeah. you become it. Did you knew at one time in your life could be? That you'd be like literally, you'd be the top, top, top of the world, not only in Samba but in the UFC. You know, it's like this is not not about I knew or no. This is like. Uh, Did you have a vision? Is what I'm. Trying I have to vision. Say. <clears throat> I have vision. Like uh, all the time, I think about like if not injuries or if nothing happen, like if I'm gonna fight, like for example, with this champion, I can beat him. Like always, like my mind think about, like. Uh, I just, oh man, I just need to compete with this guy. I, I really want to compete with him. You know, like, I remember when uh, Anthony Pettis fight with uh, Gilbert Melendez. It was like in Vegas. I was there, like, I do my rehab in, for my knee. And I and I was very close to cage, you know. Mm -hmm. And they fight for the lightweight title. And I think, like, when the fight finished, I was think like, you these to, these guys, these guys, people call them like best in the world, and I think I can beat these guys. 
Yeah. And my focus was like crazy, you know. And after that, Rafael Dos Anjos, after like three months, beat Anthony Pettis. And I was thinking like, hey, one year ago, I mow Rafael Dos Anjos. <laughs> and I'm here without belt and all these chickens, they fight for the, my title, you know. It was like, and, but that time I was injured, you know. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do everything what I have to do. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to mow all of them. And when I come back, like 2016, 14, I have injured. 16, I come back. And uh, it was like two different Khabib, you know. It's like when I watch, when I fight Dos Anjos and all these fights before you, uh, before I get injured and after that, I change completely because what, what, of focus. What, what because you, of focus. What do, you, what do you think was causing all those injuries? Because you, you've been in the UFC since what year were you in the UFC? How long have you been in the UFC for? Uh, since 2012. It's 2012. I know you were injured for the uh, a two lot. years. Yeah, you were two injured years. for a minute. What do you think it was? Could be. It was very hard time for me. You know, it's like because I cannot compete, and all guys who, who I beat, they they beat someone, and uh, Rafael dos Santos become lightweight champion. You know, it's like, and I think, okay, I just have to stay focused. You know, improve my game and come back and smash all of them. You know? Yeah. Hey, Mike. Did you see they launched a rocket ship to go to space in 10 minutes? Yeah, we're gonna be living on another planet soon. I wonder if it's like, feel zero gravity. It's amazing. You haven't been to space, have you, Mike? No, I've been to other dimensions before. You're right, Mike. When your orbits are pube-free, it feels like zero gravity. The lawnmowers 4.0 will kick your pubes into another planet. You can use it on your balls, your body, and even your anus. I see what you did there. Join the two million men worldwide with Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code HOTBOXING at manscaped.com. Abort Harry Balls and Buzz Lightyear. Your Woody was Manscaped. Have an out-of-world experience. The Performer Package 4.0 from Manscaped is launched not only in the U.S., but Canada, the U.K., across Europe, Australia, Africa, and even Singapore. What does hot boxing fans have to do? Get 20% off free shipping with the code HOTBOXING at manscaped.com. That's 20% off a free shipping with the code HOTBOXING at manscaped.com for a clean trinity beyond your space balls. We'll thank you. Like I said, tell them Mike sent you. So tell us a little bit about here, uh, Khabib. You like America? I like America. They give me, they give me big platform they to love use you my too. potential. They love you no. too. Uh, so, so how old are you here, Khabib? Nine. You're nine. Well, how big was that bear? Dude? His ass. You know what father told me here? What did he tell you? I tell him he tried to bite me. He say, bite him back. <laughs> 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 then you can understand, you know. Uh, yeah, man. He's. What uh, do you think about this, Mike? This is pretty interesting. Dude, that's a legit. He's literally biting you, dude. Did you ever? Did you ever have to get stitches because of the bear? No, no. Like because of this video, everybody think in Russia everybody wrestling with the bears. You know. If the bear loves you. If he doesn't love you. He'll kill you in three yeah. seconds. <laughs> uh, this guy's small guy. He knows yeah. just what he do. You see those claws? See those? Yeah. Three, you're dead. 1997, he, you... He, he's your friend, huh? No, he, no he's, he's like, uh, you know, like, uh, he's a uh, c- c- uh, circus. Circus, circus yeah, yeah, yeah. But what you do, 1997, you fight with who? Like, 1999, I think you fight with Luis. I don't know. You don't remember? <laughs> yeah, Lennox Lewis. What do you think? What, what Mike, Mike, Mike do? Like 1997. 1997. I think man, I can, fight yeah. with. Uh, I think you did Holy fight with Lennox Lewis. Holy no, Field. no. I think he fight with uh, Holyfield. Holy Holyfield. Yeah. Holyfield. Two. I think. Yeah. It was second yeah. fight. That, that's what that was in '97. Yeah. You, you just had your birthday, right? Your. How old are you now, Kavis? Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Still. Just September thirty-three. Thirty-two yeah. is just a baby. When I was thirty-two, I thought I was old. Yeah. Thirty-two, just a baby, right? It's a baby. Who was your uh, Khabib? Who who's the one that inspired you, to, man, to start fighting? Do you, or do you think it was something that your dad kind of set forth, and this is this is what it is? Hey, like biggest inspiration for me, it was my dad. You know, it was my father. Yeah. All my life, you know, it's like uh, I'm doing all these things only because of him, only because of him. You know, it's like. 
I remember when I fight was like some fights in UFC. I just I call him after fight right away. I call him is like, and I try to get from him like some good words, you know. And he says like, and he beginning talk about my mistakes, what I make inside the fight. And I listened to him, listened like two minutes, and uh, and I said, okay, you don't want to say nothing to me. <laughs> he said. It was good job. Just come back. We have to keep training. Yeah. You know, it's like he was like for me is like biggest motivation. You know, he gave me good energy. He gave me good advice. You know, and with him we knew like what we need, what we want. You know, like exactly. And like since when I was like, maybe like since 2005, 2004, when I beginning training combat sambo. With father, like uh, we have the goal, you know, it's like become UFC fighter. We have the goal, but that time nobody competed from Russia in UFC, and uh, it was very hard to sign. Like when I signed end of the 2011, it was almost impossible to sign with the UFC, like someone from Russia. Yeah. I was like first athlete, and you know, it's like uh, not many people believe us, but. Uh, when I see how father believe me, how really want this, this is giving me like crazy energy. Yeah, did you have did you have an inspiration like that, Mike? I know you always bring up Roberto Duran. You know, uh, him, Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali. Yeah, Muhammad Ali number one. Though, yeah, yeah. How how cool was that for you, Mike, to have Muhammad Ali as your? You know, obviously he was there when you won your first world title. You yeah, know? it was just. Um, I met him in the Olympics. When I was 18 years old, I met him then. But uh, him and my, my manager was close friends, so that's how I got to meet him and talk to him on the phone. And he just inspired me. I wanted to be like him. Yeah, the charisma. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, do, you, what, do, you, what do you think made Ali so special with the, with the public? What was it about Muhammad Ali that made him so special? Because he loved them more than they loved him. That's the only difference. Isn't that something? He loved them more than they loved him. Yeah, that's a trip, man. Just uh, uh, his spirit was just like a glow, right? Yeah. There's some people have that, man. You know what I mean? I can, I don't, I've, I regret Mike not getting a chance to like meet Ali. I was, oh, he was you know, loved you. He was loved you. Yeah. He, uh, did, did you, I know you find a lot of inspiration From with Muhammad, uh, Ali. Muhammad Ali. I think this guy, this guy inspired not only like fighters, like athletes, I think everything. millions of people around the yeah, world. Yeah, businessmen, everything. Yeah, he was like, I think, m bigger than just sport, you know. It's, my, it's like, you know, one of the famous, like, human being of all time, like, I think it's like. Yeah. Like, someone say like, 1980, he was uh, number one famous human in the world. Yeah. yeah. He's like. And I remember, like, when you fight, it was, uh, I remember, 23rd February 2003, like, 18 years ago. Uh -huh. You supposed to fight with Clifford Etienne. And I was, like, like week before the fight, like, all Russian media showed this fight, or oh, Mike Tyson uh, going to fight with Clif Clifford Etienne. And I remember it, it supposed to fight like five morning in uh, Moscow time. And I told my father, please, can you make me wake up? I, I really want to watch this fight. And me and my father, <laughs> we watch your fight, but you make me a little bit upset because you knock him out in first round. I was waiting for this. I was waiting for no, this all night. Go. You know, have to go. Like, yeah. have to you know go. it's like all this walk out to the ring, like he come, you come, like, you know, it's like- You got a party to yeah, go, it's like, I see my family, you gotta go. It's like, just gotta fight go. begin again, you put them on sleeve, it's like- I pray be to Allah, thank you. And me. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember that time. I remember yeah. with my father, I watched live, you know. How was your How was your first interaction when you first met Mike? I met him at my house. Oh, I yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you show him the, you show him the, I didn't even see I don't think he remember me. You remember, I remember me? You remember? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> gave, I gave him my, uh, I got like, the hat, I got the wig. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got the wig. Yeah, the, what, what do like, you call it, bro? Papaja. Papaja. Yeah, it's like, I, I gave him this, you remember this? Yeah. It's like, honestly, it was like before my fight, I think like Barboza or someone. 
I oh, supposed that's to before, fight that. That's before you were a champion. Yes, before I become champion. Like, that's what and I'm saying, uh, like Mike I gave him like uh, yeah. I was honestly I was nervous a little bit. Why? Because because one of the uh, biggest my childhood dream it was like meet Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Ronaldo, like old Ronaldo yeah. like, from from Brazil. You know, it's like all these athletes. <clears throat> when I watch, I watch all the time. You guys like in TV and when internet come in internet, like you know, it's like for me it was like big inspiration. You know, it's like I remember like uh, when I go to Ali, we was on the way and uh, say I can't believe I'm going to meet with Mike Tyson. You know, it's like. Uh, big well, dream. <laughs> I wish my wife said that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Damn. A lot of men suffer from ED, but not everyone addresses it because it involves too much. Going to the doctor, sitting in the office, talking about the issue. I keep telling you guys, Roman, trust me, man. You don't even have to leave your house to get started. All you need to do is log on to GetRoman.com slash Hotboxing and complete an online evaluation. And after the evaluation, you will be matched with a issued licensed healthcare professional and he will be able to work with them and everything else from treatment plus being prescribed medicine. The entire process is super easy and discreet. Nobody will ever know and you'll get free shipping too. Take care of your ED today. Talk to the doctor and take care of it. Just go to GetRoman.com slash Hotboxing now to get $15 off your first order. Like I said, tell him Mike sent you. We fast forward your life could be even, obviously, you know, we saw you talk about the Barbosa fight. Yeah. And I remember seeing you, uh, or was it Kevin Lee or Barbosa? When you had called Conor McGregor a chicken, it was in New York. It was in New York. Michael City. Johnson. Michael Johnson. I'm sorry, and I remember that's when like you know the crowd was like, dude, like you know there's it was the majority of the crowd was all Irish. He had called out Conor McGregor, which Conor McGregor was fighting for a second. Belt. That, that, was, that, was, that was the initiation, the initiation of the rivalry, and obviously you go out and uh, you know prior to the fight with uh, with you were supposed to fight Holloway for yeah. your, for for your fight. He ends yeah. up backing out, and you said no. Bring out the next. And then they ended up bringing out, uh, they brought somebody else. I think, who was it? Uh, Aliquinta after yeah, that? Quinta, Pettis, uh, Holloway, Felder, and Tony Ferguson. Nobody mm. show up, you know? Yeah. But I remember Nobody like after, that. when I, I make weight and they don't have opponent, they every like five minutes, they offer me, oh, can you fight with him? Can you fight with him? And I was like, I don't sleep all night because of I, I was making weight. And I say, please, I off my phone. I tell Ali, please don't ask me about opponent. Just find me someone. I'm going to go sleep. When I wake up, I need opponent, you know. And I remember, <laughs> like, I wake up, I say, hey. Do you have somebody for him? <laughs> who's my opponent? You know, uh, you say, uh, uh, Quinta, you know. Mike, how, how gangster is that? It's like, bring someone. If we wake up in the morning, I want to have an opponent. That's a winner, man. You know what I'm saying? You ain't. You ain't trying to shortcut nothing. I respect you for that. You know, it's like like I don't understand people when they talk about oh, this is like one day before the fight. I was preparing preparation preparing for different type of style. You know, I cannot. I need time to prepare. Like I don't understand this. You know, if you wanna be best, you can. You have to be best. You can. You know. You know. It's like you can beat like anybody in the world. This it's, is it's fight like, for the title. It's you, like the Olympics. Tonight you wanna become world champion. Doesn't matter, like yeah, Quinta, Petis, or uh, like no, but that's how the, that's how the Olympics is. Yeah, you, like, you have to be ready. You never and know. Rolling for everybody, you right, Mike? Know, in the back know. in the amateurs, I think that's what makes it so unique is the fact that you're the best of you has to come out at that time. In order for you to say you're the best, you got to be the best at any yeah. time. You know, it's like fighting, that. And fighting, running, and fighting. If everyone else is thinking the same thing, yeah. And you know, it's like was, you mentioned about Michael Johnson fight that night. It that night I was very emotional because this fight have big history. You know. Yeah. They send me they send me contract fight versus Alvarez fight for the title. First of all, they send me fight in uh, Canada. I sign a contract. Then then they send me fight with him in uh, I think Madison Square Garden. I yeah. sign contract and I was. What's going on? I don't understand why this guy sent me like two different contracts. Okay, this contract was after, for who? 
uh, they to, to fight who fight Eddie Alvarez fight okay. for the title. Okay. And and then the, then I sign so contract and I see in media like Conor gonna fight with uh, Alvarez and I I was like hey I supposed to fight with him I signed already the contract. So you think they're using they're using you as a pawn? I then? think they play game. Yeah, I think of they course. play game. You know, it's like they play game and I and I send then then a message. Hey, I understand everything. Okay, yeah. if you guys if you guys give him con like this fight, I understand. You know, it's like this guy is like big name. That time I don't have big name. Yeah. You just use my name to force them sign contract. I understand everything. Okay, just give me someone. I want to fight same night. Just give me someone. You get big, big organization. Just find him someone. They say, okay, it was like one month before the fight. They say, you just be ready. We're going to find you. And this is this is, this is is how confident he is, Mike. Is Khabib will literally Let's be in the corner talking to Dana White as he's punishing his opponents. We fast forward, man. Obviously, right before you're getting ready to fight for the title, that whole incident with uh, with Conor McGregor happens. Do you remember that, Mike? Right? Which uh, that made headlines, man. What were you feeling at that time when that whole thing happened? Because the whole story was, I know it was it happened with Artem, because Artem was saying something in Russian to you guys. Yeah. I don't know what he had said, but you ended up, I don't know who, I don't know if you slapped him or whatever, but that let Conor McGregor to come yeah. in, obviously, you know, throw a dollar through the bus. I would think like, Oh, a lot of fans come today. <laughs> when when oh, I yeah, see a lot of people fans? outside, I think, wow, it's like <laughs> fans come here. Like they want to take pictures Ooh. with someone. You know, it's like, uh, you know, when you go to the, when you go to the like, like real party, I talk about party, like fighting party, you know? Yeah. Why you bring camera with you? Yeah. You're going to war. You don't need camera, you know? This is show like, it was a lot of, um, What's her name? Uh, security, security there, like a lot of they they try to just show, you know. When I go to do something, I slap all I slap all his team. Okay. You know, like when you go to the war, you have goal. You have to do something. You have to take your goal. When you take your goal, you become winner. So you take but they goal they now? just come here to show up like you know, like yes. promote the fight, like everything. Like drama. It was, it was like we we going to weigh in, and a lot of media there. I don't understand how it's like, uh, like twenty camera there. You no, know, it's like a lot of security. Look at that. It's like that. Of course, nobody gonna let you fight there. This is one hundred percent. You know. It's yeah. Like, Damn, I know it was like that. What, what what's your take on that, Mikey? What do you, what's your take on McGregor doing that? That's pretty drastic. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah, someone can get hurt real bad. Yeah, well, that two. Way. I think two people were hospitalized. Uh, yeah, see because what I'm the glass kind of went in their eyes. There's yeah, two fights that were canceled, right? Kiesa. How many Kiesa, losses yeah. is that? Kiesa and one woman. And Rose, Rose, not yeah, yeah, actually Rose, three. And then the other days. dude, uh, yeah, Ray Borg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously, you go out, you beat Alan Quinta for the title, man. Now, 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 you're the champion at the light heavyweight division. And then that's pretty much actually that was the start of of the McGregor fuel. Lightweight, not light heavyweight. Um, uh, light, yeah, lightweight. Lightweight, yeah, yeah lightweight. Yeah. And Did uh, I say light heavyweight? No, yeah. now yeah. I look yeah. like heavyweight. No. <laughs> but I competition the lightweight. You know, it's like next day after this fight, I jumped to the training camp. Really? Because I knew we're gonna fight. We're gonna fight, and I I just was waiting for contract date. Just next day, I beginning training. I don't yeah. stop. Yeah. Because I knew it's like when fight, fight time come, you know, it's like uh, someone, someone have to show like yeah. spirit, heart, you know. But when time come, you know, it's like I was preparing so hard. When time come and inside the cage, when he say this to me, it's like I was talk with him like crazy, and he give back to me like, hey, it's only business, you know. It's like, it sounds like you know, it's like when when my father go crazy with me, I try to make him stop, you know. Yeah, and I like try to found some excuse. <laughs> hey, you know, like I, yeah, it, it I sounds like same, 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 same thing. You know, it's yeah. like, and I was what I was preparing for these things. Yeah. You know, it's like I was preparing for war, and when I come here, I don't fight opponent. You know, yeah. like this is make me empty. Yeah. And why I did this after the fight? Why I jump? Everything like I don't think like people gonna understand this because like it was so emotional. So you time felt, for me. I can probably I can probably it's elaborate like, there for you because the first time I fought Demetrius Johnson, 
He knocked me out and, and two minutes and 36 seconds to the body, which is the worst, my knees. And I didn't feel as a man that I shook his hand, that I gave him a fair fight. And I think that ate me. Okay. For you, you putting a beat down on McGregor, did you feel the exact same thing? Like he didn't give you the hand like he should have. Ah, uh, you know, it, like, you know, you know what I'm saying. It was a little bit different. It was a little bit different. You, you know, felt empty, I, like it wasn't like I was expecting more. Yeah, I was expecting more, and uh, you know, it's like when I go, like I talk with him, he give me this excuse, oh, this is like just only business, everything. Like, okay, when I catch his neck and I choke him, like uh, <laughs> he he tap, you know, it's like, and I think, hey, you bring like thousands of people from Ireland here on different part of world and you tap in front and like and you talk about like about warrior or something like this how you can tap go sleep go sleep like and he tap and i was like okay it's not enough i need something you know you know it's like and i see like some his corners like talk with me like and i think oh i have to bite his heart you know and I jumped to f like, you know, like catch something. Of course, I knew like a lot of people. But You're this time, nobody want to talk with me. I don't understand. Yeah. Everybody, everybody want to talk with me in press conference, in Twitter, you know. Yeah, but you inside the cage, pissed. like. Damn, here it goes. The ego. Woo. So you went after, you went after Dylan Dennis, right? Is that how you were trying to hit? Or were you just trying to hit somebody? You were just still pissed, No, I right? just tried to bite his heart, you know. Yeah. That time, I, I really want to bite his heart, you know. I don't und I don't you know. Sound like, maybe you sound you guys... like Uncle Mike, dude. <laughs> everybody, you guys are all. Everybody wanted to get a piece of him. Why? Because he disrespected your family. He disrespected your faith. Yeah. He disrespected your father, your mother. I mean, he disrespected everybody. Okay, I have a question. If there is no police, what's gonna happen? You tell me. I if think, there is I, no I, no 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 referee, I no think, police, no referee. Oh, you kill him. He been sacrificed live. You remember you remember this fight, Mike? Yeah. This is this is real things. The real thing is not with bus, you know, when two hundred security around like camera, everything. This is real thing. You know, it's like I was like I would think I was preparing for real war. You know, when I come there I don't find nobody. You know, this is make me like put me like in emotional, you know, make me emotional because I don't find nothing. Yeah. I was expecting more, you know. Did you take a lot of, uh, for, for, for Mike, man, you, you, obviously you've seen Mike's fights, man. Mike, you, you've had a couple of rides back in the day in the ring. Remember that last, uh, the last Holyfield fight? <laughs> yeah, of course, a Can you talk rides. about this a little bit? The, the, because first fight, like, he, he, he hit you with the head, I think, yeah. like a couple of times. What do you think about this? Do you ever bite someone? No, no, uh, no but I could, I could feel the frustration, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you understand his emotional, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, but I've been headbutting, man, so I, I know what that this thing feels crazy. like. It pisses you off because there's some people that are really sneaky with it. Would you say, Mike? Mm -hmm. People that really have a hard head, really slide that thing in. What happened after? Now you guys cool? Good? Yeah. What happened with Eve? <laughs> yeah, plastic shit. It's gone. Yeah. Crazy. Would you, would you, would you think, Mike, like obviously... And Mike has made, he has reconciled with Holyfield, man. And obviously, I saw the comments, too, that uh, that Conor McGregor uh, that Conor McGregor just recently said about, and I don't want to bring it up. We don't got to talk about it either. It could be, because there's, I think he's really going overboard. He tried to hit me family. with that one, too. Yeah. So I'm diving straight. Yeah. But do you, you talk think... About, you talk about last tweet? Yeah, the last tweet, man. How, you, you know, it's like, to come inside my mind, you know, like... Like this is very hard. You Look know? at me. Like, oh, people so can say whatever they think. You yeah. know. Did you like, hear about uh, that, Mike? What? Did you hear about like, the last tweet McGregor did with uh, Khabib? No. Yeah, because <clears throat> Khabib had mentioned, and I've, if you don't mind me talking about it. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, Khabib had mentioned it's like it's 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 good over evil. When he was fighting Poirier, when when McGregor fought Poirier, and he says uh, good will always prevail, and then uh, you know Connor Connor's crazy ass. He he wrote was like yeah man it's good versus evil and then he says something about along the lines that kind of COVID kind of took your dad in that sense like going below the belt you know what I'm saying like completely but something that I will say about that your dad has always said that at one time at one point he would invite Conor McGregor to a barbecue man no it's like my 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 dad was a, like different level yo know, about like this situation he always like his heart was like so like clean you know. And, uh, you know, it's like, like when he talked about this, uh, 
You know, only evil can talk about your father, like wife, kids, religion. Like, if you're normal, like human, you're never going to talk about this stuff, you know. Like, for me, it's like, show. I think he posted this tweet, like, uh, drunk too much or do something. Yeah. And the next day, I think, and he always delayed his tweet. And I think when he become on normal life, and he said, oh, what yeah. I did, like, and he delayed. This is my opinion, what he do, like, all the time. Yeah. And, how, uh, how, how would you take that, Mike? How would you take that if, uh, you know, obviously, we got to sell the fight, but there's a limit, man. There's a, hey, man, you you know. Hey, listen. Um, you can't be talking about people's dads and COVID, especially well, listen, after perishing. I just know um, in this business, everything goes. You know, everything goes. Promoting the fight, everything goes. <laughs> No, I agree. When you, if you wanna promote the fight, yeah. But uh, you know, it's like when when someone is not with us, you know, is not even you alive. Don't you just know, to be a mean I don't trick. think this is like. Come on. This is show you what you have inside. This is show your like how dirty you are. Yeah. Like this is show like when you come when you when you one of the best in the world and you and you come and you punch someone like seventy seven years uh, like old guy like old man, this is show your heart. This yeah. is show who you are inside, how yeah. dirty you are, you know. And you know it's like uh, when you have parents and when when you have kids, how you can show yourself like this? I don't understand why his close people don't tell him hey. What's can going I, on? Yeah, can I give you... I ju and that's what I know from your perspective. Obviously, there's something about Mike that I will say that he's... You've reconciled with everybody, Mike. Yeah, man. With everyone from Lennox Lewis. No, because... No, way. I'm not going to let that stuff kill me. Yeah. Having a girl, you're not liking somebody. That takes a lot of energy. And I have the energy. I have, I have uh, my kids, grandparents, and wife, cousins. I have too much people that I love to waste their energy on. I'm not going to waste on no fucking scumbag. Yeah, That's just not what I'm gonna do. A couple of years they would have got me on that. I'd be in jail and shit. Not today. Yeah. So you you heard what he said, Khabib? He, Mike yeah. doesn't hold grudges. It's too much it's pain too much. for him to hold grudges. Are you are you at that grudge a stage with McGregor? It's okay, man. We're all human, dude. It's okay to feel a little animosity towards somebody. But you think you'll ever let it go? Uh, you know, I think I think. Uh, I think, like, one of the biggest reasons why I become champion, I think mm, this is about my mental part. How I can control my emotional, you know. I, I think I can control anything. Anything happened with me in the world, I can control this. I can handle this, you know. And uh, I know it's like a lot of people, like, I remember when I when I was supposed to fight with him, like, like, coach tell me, hey, you, you have to focus, you know, it's like, and I was like, Coach, hey, I'm focused. You say, oh, you call home, you call friends. I said, no, I'm good. This is normal for me. You suppose, after like 30 minutes, your biggest fight in your life, biggest fight in UFC history become. Uh, you call your friends on phone. Like I said, Coach, please don't worry. Everything is good. I'm good. I'm relaxed. And when time comes, I'm going to show you. You know, what like, do you what do you think what do you think Conor McGregor is missing in his life? What do you what do you think it is, man? Uh, if you had you know, to say, there's if you had to pinpoint one thing. When you become rich, when you become famous, uh, some people they lose real real people around him. They lose them because uh, because real people who love you, they gonna tell you true. But fake people, they always say, oh, you good, you good, you good. You know, it's like they never say not, say to you nothing because they don't want to upset you. Because yeah. they know they're going to lose this comfortable yeah. zone. Yeah. But, but you know, it's like, but real people, they don't care about this. They was, they was with you before you become famous and rich. And they don't care about your money. They don't yeah. care about your fame. They just love you. And they, when they say to you true, you don't like this because of your ego. You know, and uh, I think he lose a lot of people around him. Yeah. It's just my opinion. I don't think he have, like, people who was with him be before when he become champion. Yeah. And uh, everybody needs someone who remind you, hey, you're doing this. This is bad. This is good. This is bad. This is yeah. life. In you other know? words, like, you don't need yes, you know? man. You don't need people that just to, to just bow. Obviously, you've been there, Mike. 
Yeah, man. What's, what's your take on what he just said, Mike? I just know how people are, man. They're like monkeys. The higher we get, the more we show our ass. Say that again? I said we're like monkeys. Yeah. The higher we get, the more we show our ass. <laughs> it is. It's true, man. It's really true. Most of the people like this. I agree with you. Oh, most, most of the people like this. Yeah, seriously. Not, not everybody, but most. Most most of the people. Yeah. I have like, I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky on this life, honestly, I think. I think uh, like all people who around me, they was like when I beginning, when I was like nobody, they was with me. Like right now, they still with me. You know, I'm very happy about this. Yeah, you know? your brotherhood, Max. I know th yeah. these guys like Mike. Oh, yeah, they, 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 oh. You talk about our brotherhood. I learned a lot of that from Ali, man. Like you know, like the dude, they're just like brothers, man. Like you know, talk about a little bit about your your your, like, your support system and all your. Yeah, brothers. it's like like if we talk about Ali, like uh, I I met him like uh, 2014 before I become injured. Like after that, we had like very, very hard two years, like injury, 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 surgery, like, uh, you know, it's like, but we're still together. You know, when we have hard time, we was together. When we have good time, we're together. Yeah. Like same thing like with Islam. all my brothers, like yeah. Islam, like everybody, like Islam, I know more than 20 years, you know, all these guys. And, uh, you know, it's like sometime, sometime, I'm going to be honest, sometime like, like when, when you're best in the world, you don't like when people say to you, hey, you have to do this, you know? Yeah. But you have to be clear with your heart. Yeah. If you're clear with your heart and you know this guy say true, you have yeah. to say, yes, okay, I agree with you. Yeah, so we have but, a lot of debates, me and you, uh, Kobe. <laughs> Every time we see each other. But it's what? just we like to compare stats. You know, he's 29 and 0. He retired pound for pound and defeated. I'm a two division champion, defended both of my belts, a, a Olympic champion. Every time we see each other, because I respect Khabib, I respect the crap out of you, just so you know that, man. Uh, you you know? know, I have good numbers too, but uh, honestly, I'm, I'm going to say this. I feel you a little bit higher than me, like in sport, like levels. You know why? Yeah. Because of uh, Olympic, Olympic gold medal. Yeah. yeah. This is like different level. Yeah. Like this is like dream for. Anybody, everyone who become like training, like this is them, like boxers, wrestlers, doesn't matter for everybody. Olympic gold medal. I don't know about my opinion. This is just about what? Like about Olympic gold medal. This is highest level in sports. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mike knows sport. the amateurs. Yeah. I wish I had one. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. We, we, <laughs> Me we talk too. about a time, like even in professionals, even Mike says that that. A three three minute fight in amateurs against the best in the world, and you don't know who you're gonna fight. Yeah, that's the, yeah. that's, is, that's, is that's the purest worse, competition. That's worse than a fifteen round amateur fight, a professional fight. Yeah, but you was Olympic champion, junior Olympic champion, right? Junior, yeah. senior, senior yeah. too. But you know, it's like I'm gonna I'm gonna put you like a little bit higher than me, but I still believe we are like like same yeah. level, same chair. No, for same sure, chair. and that's and and I will say this about Khabib. He is the most dominant fighter in UFC history. He's also the most humble fighter in UFC history. I wish I was as humble as him, Mike. What is Me it with too. him? Me too. I hate his guts, I love the man. swagger, dude. The watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know? he's a beautiful person. <laughs> now, you go off. Obviously, you, you beat Conor McGregor. You know, you become an instant star, man. Like you No, like, you're the best fighter in the world. I still believe I'm the best. I do, I too. I still believe. I can cap it with anyone, like even right now. I, 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 I finished almost one year ago, but I still believe every day I train, I'm in the gym, you know, I love this. You know, it's like... Uh, hey, nobody's debating you. You're yeah. the best. Yes, I, I still believe. Yeah, you know? so yeah. Khabib, so you go off, you win your title, obviously you you knock out Conor McGregor, I mean, you tap him out, uh, Conor McTapper. As we call them. Yeah. <laughs> you got you, the sick. You got <laughs> the sick people. Yeah. I, get it from, I get it from the trolls. You go off and obviously you defeat Dustin Poirier where people thought he had a potential. I never thought it. I didn't think any of these dudes could honestly beat you. But you ended up defeating him. You ended up going through Justin Gaethje with a broken foot. And then you go, you win the fight. You win the world title, man. And obviously your dad had just passed away, man. And I resonated so much with you crying. I knew there was something like deeper than you just winning a world title, man. You decide to hang up the gloves, man. Is that the most emotional feeling you've ever felt yeah. in your in your fighting career? Yeah, I think so. Like 24 October that night, it was like most emotional moment for me in my life. You know, it's like because uh, 
Because, you know, it's like that time my dream become true, but without my father, you know. Mm -hmm. My dream become true, it's like uh, not about defend my title. You know, I truly believe that time I was on top of MMA community, like all, like I was the best in the world, like pound for pound. Yeah, I believe that. I, I, I was the best that time. Next day, I don't talk about next day, like 23rd October or 25th. I talk about 24 October when I finished just engaging. I was the best in the world. I don't talk about right now. Right now, I really believe like other guys, like I think like Kamaru Usman. But my 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 dream was like become on top, and that's it and finish. You know, yeah. and uh, it was very emotional because like it was not only my dream. Yeah, it was my father's dream true. Yeah. You know, we're doing this all life together, and that time it was like without father. That's why it was. Very yeah. emotional. Moment. A little bit the the fact that I know you could be but obviously you're crying and you're weeping. I I you really honestly you, you I don't really remember do this. <laughs> I wanna be honest. Like yeah. I don't remember yeah. like but, that's everything. What, but 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 those are true feelings, could be I remember when I retired from wrestling, I lost at the Olympic trials. And I remember, you know, typically in wrestling what they do, they take off the shoes and they put them on the mat. I don't know how to do that in boxing. Yeah. But I remember just feeling <gasps> <sighs> like the, the sport know, that, that feel, gave me everything, yeah, right? Mike, talk about it, Mike. But yes, um, and everybody tells you you're the best. Everybody knows you're gonna win, and you got the big head, and you lose. And you say, where am I gonna go from here? God, <laughs> that, was, that was your. That was. I your... don't know about this feeling. Yeah. No, I do. I yeah. know adversity. Yeah, this is. I think the difference between like Mike and us is Mike went through. There is a lot of like this yeah. with him. I yeah. want to ask you one question. What? About you really underestimate him or you was out shape? Who? Oh. Douglas. I really uh, underestimate him. Underestimate him? Underestimate you, him. You almost finish him like they... They like gave half... me a long count. Yes, it's like... And what about your shape? You was good shape? Uh, okay. Okay? Yeah, 50 to, 50 to 1 underdog. You know what the crazy thing about that story, Ben? There's, there's a whole backstory about Buster Douglas is his mother had recently died and mm. obviously nobody believed that he could be Mike, you know, this was back in 92. I think and he was on the same situation like I, I was in October. Exactly, man. So there's a, there's that energy, man, that you had. There's that presence that you no, had. No, I don't believe that. I believe they set me up to lose because they were betting against me. Look at how, look how big those odds were. Yeah. But you you're, know. I'll be honest with you, Mike. I, I feel like you're more of a cruiserweight. That's why I was so impressed by you because in heavyweight, you're probably considered a short heavyweight or yeah. a small heavyweight. Yeah. And you're biting, you're beating all these dudes that were 50 pounds heavier than you. Yeah. You know, but listen, on this, on this, what, what do you call that again? Um, statistic scale. Yeah. It doesn't show how much heart you got, it doesn't show how much will, desire you have. Yeah. Only shows how big you are. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like why I say he was in the same situation like I am. Because <clears throat> I remember my emotional when I fight was uh, Justin Gaethje, last fight. It was like when I go to the cage, you know, the, the, this guy, he, he hit like truck, you know. Like nobody hit harder me, like, harder than Justin Gaethje. His kick, his punch, his left hook, right hook, right uppercut, you know, it's like, but... I get, I make him hit me, yeah. you know? You had like to. when I go to the cage and I was like, <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna bring him to the deep ocean. Yeah. Deep yeah. ocean yeah. is like, I'm game, I'm gonna make him tired on stand up and I'm gonna bring him on ground and finish him there, you yeah. know? First of all, what I have to do, be, because he have very good wrestling base. He is very good wrestlers and the, like beginning of fight, I knew like this guy don't let me wrestling. And I go through on his punch kicks and uh, you know, it's like everything what happened with, with father, like, like I was think like nothing to lose, nothing yeah. to lose. I'm gonna go like and my coach tell me, hey, listen to game plan, listen to game plan, <clears throat> be careful, well, head you, movement. You, you, you know, it's had, like you, you talk about your father, you, your father's father's plan that they talk about. Yes, yeah. like take him <clears throat> down. You know, it's like but. I don't listen to everything what coach say, yeah. but because I was very emotional. And I remember that fight too, Khabib, and I'm like, and that, that's why I know it's like, I, I always think like the, the the best legends in the sport are the ones that, that are better competitors than they are fighters. And I remember watching that fight with you and Justin Gaethje and you pressed him. Yeah. 
And nobody has ever done that. Because when you pressed him, you took away that that leg kick that he does. That he's so famous for. And then you ended up, you know, bringing it down to the ground. And then you ended up finishing him. But yeah. I do remember this is this is he's a killer, but he's got a kind soul to him. I remember when I remember you didn't want to hurt Justin Gaethje, so you decided to get on top of him and uh, do the triangle choke because obviously you knew that his mother and his father were in attendance. Yeah, you know, it's like I met his parents like before the fight, like it was three days before the fight, and I knew his parents gonna be there. Yeah, you know, and uh, I know this guy very tough, and he never give up. And I go to the like arm bar. I understand maybe this guy is non top, and I'm gonna broke his arm. You know, in front of his parents, and I was like, and I transitioned to the triangle choke. <laughs> you know, like when you choke people. I'll see you want you want to break. His even arm. if you don't tap, you slip. You know, this is much better than you if you broke your opponent. Mm -hmm. arm, I you think know? so too. After the fight, man, obviously you're emotional. We just talked about it. You know, you're, uh, you know, you're in cloud nine. Obviously, you're a weeping man. If you don't remember, go back and watch it, man. I think I thought it was special. I thought it was really when, cool. When? But then Dana White had offered you, and this is this is this is true, Mike. And check this out, he had offered Khabib a hundred million dollars to fight Floyd Mayweather, and Khabib said, "No, I'm done." Because I'm done. I don't wanna make boxing community upset with me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no desire, man. Like, because from what I take it, uh, could be because obviously for me, bro, like. The only way that I'll come back to the sport yeah. is for money or legacy. Because I, I, to me, in my eyes, I know, and, and, and may, but that's the only thing that's going to motivate me. And I'm satisfied and I'm full. For you, the money doesn't matter. A hundred million dollars, Mike. I no, know what Mike would do. Not dig, right? <laughs> There's people that had $20 million, billion dollars, and were broke. You know, the art and taking care of money. Can you hear me? Billions of dollars. I, listen, going I ain't broke. listening to you on went that back, one. Went back, went back, sleeping in, in um, Motel Six. Imagine having that billions of dollars. <laughs> then he's back in Motel Six. Yeah. I was like about money. If we talk, like, of course, money makes sense too. Mm -hmm. You know, but not not for. But I'm never. I never fight for money. Never. Money is no, only like, to help people. That's fortunate. Yes, yeah, like you. money is good. Money is money is good. Like, uh, but most of the time they bad. You know. I think like they bring, they the money bring you to the situation you never been, you know, and you don't know how to act when you have so much money, you know. Yeah. It's like a little bit dangerous, so. But I think like in this business, I I don't come to make money, yeah. you know. I come here to legacy, you know. Yeah. And then when like end of the like couple like month ago, he sent uh, Dana sent message uh, Ali say hey, why Habib don't even ask me how much money I'm gonna give him. <laughs> And I was like, <laughs> Dana. but I'm not interesting about how much money you're going to give him. I already say I'm retired and that's it. You know, this is makes sense yeah. more than money. Of course, I have a lot of business because of I want to make money, you know, but this business like fighting business for me is not for making money. Maybe like most of the fighters, they're going to say, oh, I've, this is like good words. I don't believe him, but this is their decision. But. I truly like believe like and I know like I'm not here I was not here to make money you know on this business. Yeah. I just want to become best in the world and obviously not only were you offered 100 million dollars to fight Floyd but also it was one thing that your dad always wanted for you to fight George St. Pierre man to make it 30 and 0. Honestly George St. Pierre fight was my father dream fight. Yeah. You know but not like yours. because like mm, not my like I'm okay with this fight like like when I born, like when I grew up, like fighter, like 2007, six, eight, nine, that time it was like George St. Pierre prime time. And yeah. <clears throat> me and father, we always watch fights and we always learn from George St. Pierre, you know. That's why like he was my, my father's favorite fighter, you know. Yeah. It's like, but right now, I don't think this is like good fights, like yeah. even for me and for right. him. How, how I'm 32, he's 40, you know, it's like two big difference, first of all. And right. second, I, I'm finished. He finished too, you know, it's like. So no desire for Floyd, no desire for George St. Pierre. I, I sense it from you because I think we're in the same boat. I, I would come back if, if the money's right. But I think for you, man, I feel like there's peace in you. And I feel like people need to really accept the fact that when you say I'm finished, 
I'm finished. I'm you've, finished. Been, you've been wrestling yeah, bears, yeah, yeah. freestyle wrestling. Yes, yes, yes. Judo, uh, combat sambo. Judo, combat sambo. I get you, bro. People 12, don't get it. 12 years professional MMA. 12 years. Yeah. 12 years. Yeah, you know, yeah it's like, almost like you want to expand much. and obviously you're with the royal family. I mean, obviously... Entrepreneurship. It's time for entrepreneurship. That's where he's at now, Mike. Businessman. That's where he's at Business now. Business is much better than fights. Yeah. You agree? Yeah. I don't know. You also have to go to the hospital afterward, but I love fighting too. <laughs> yeah, how would that fight with you and George St. Pierre if that legacy fight was to happen? How would that turn out, Habib? I think I'm like, you know, like George was very good. He was great. And I'm, I am I just think we was competing in two different uh, eras. eras. Like... He was 10 years ago, he was the best. Right now, yeah. it's my time. And I think, like, I'm, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like same thing. What about, like, if Mike Tyson fight with Muhammad Ali? Yeah. Same thing, you know? But right now, your guys could fight, and I would make a ton of money. <laughs> but, yeah, but I, I, I want a prediction, man. I want to know from Khabib himself, man. How would that uh, fight end up? If I fight with him? Yes. I think I don't change nothing. Just same thing. Pressure, pressure. I don't think he's his wrestling better than my no, wrestling. No, there's a fight. But with... he's a little bit bigger than me. Yeah, more powerful. I think. I think. I think, you, I think you would fill in. I, I think if you decide to make a comeback at 170 pounds, I think that weight class would be perfect. Sometimes you know why we lose love of the sport, Khabib? It's because it's because we cut too much weight. Too much. Yeah. I you know what I'm saying? That this is the reason why I retire from wrestling. It's not the reason why I retire from fighting, but. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes, hardest part. Hardest part. Yes, yes. That's, cutting that's weight the biggest is hard. Part. I just was cutting weight all night with my three guys. Like this is like hardest part. They, everybody talk about, oh, this is my last hakat weight. This is my and I was like, and I see like when I was talking like this like seven, ten years ago, like everybody say when they cutting weight, this is like my last, last time when I do these things. You know, it's like uh, this is very hard. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think Mike understands us. <laughs> You're you cut, you cut, you did, you find, did you cut what in the amateurs, Mike? Not really. I, I, I just lost 110 pounds. Right now, yes. But when you We're professional competing. athlete and you don't have nothing oh, to I cut, hate, you know, yeah. it's like when you cut 30 pounds. Like, I always cut weight because I eat a lot in between fights. I get real fat. So I think right now I can cut 30 pounds like one week, you know, it's like... Yeah. I'm Henry, a hard Henry too. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of cut. Yeah, you, you saw you saw that twisted steel yesterday. Like, oh. Yeah, neon Man. belly, neon belly. I think a lot of people talk about this. On the, you know, they talk about your fighting, they talk about your father, they talk about your legacy, they talk about Dagestan, but rarely do people ever talk about your mother, man. You know. <laughs> Obviously, the desire for her, she doesn't want you to fight, man. And, and so neither does my mom. You know, she's happy that I'm retired. I just want to get your perspective on your on your mother, man, your and your mother's love. Yeah, it's like uh, my mother when she grew up, she have she's big brother. He was wrestler, and then she get married with my father, and she have husband like wrestler. Then we grew up. Ooh, we born no, no, like no, no, me so and my brother. She have. Like so your, mom, all, your mom was a wrestler? No, no, no. no, no. Okay. She's brother. Oh, her brother. She's brother. Okay. All life. Okay, her brother. My bad. She's my bad. someone have it's around like wrestlers, you know, yeah. and she understands sport. Yeah. But she don't like when people punch like each other face. You yeah. know. She like like uh, like uh, when kids doing some sports, but she don't like like punch face. You know, like hurt people. So now the fact that obviously your dad's no longer that leader in your life. The person that takes it that you have to respect the most out of anybody in the world it's is mother. your mother. It's mother. So if your mother was to say, so even when my father was alive, still? I always tell him, "Hey, <laughs> I love mother more than you." You know, it's like, <laughs> and he say, "This is this is your choice because I remember, like, my, when my mother and father was alive, I was love my mother more more than father too." I always say my thing. son, to "Get out of my room. get off my wife." Get away from my wife. It's my mother. This is my wife. You hear me? Get your own wife. Get away. Keep him away. Ma! Yeah, it's like yeah. not nothing like mother in the world. Like you know, it's like. Uh, but if, uh, if she was to grant you, he's like, hey, your your dad's last wish. You know, if she, you know, for for whatever reason, they you know it's in her heart to tell you, hey, Khabib, uh, Khabib come back, man. 
grant right. your father's last wish, would you would you be willing? Would you? Be? No, for my she mother. Say that. My mother would say that, right? No. Never said, but but I'm gonna do everything what my mother say. You know, it's like mm -hmm. anything for my mother. Like I remember when I was kid, like like uh, like five, six, like seven, whatever. No. When I fight in street and come back, she asked me like she never asked me why you fight. Like my father asked me all the time, hey, stop fighting. You know, it's like because he knows like I have I have skills, I have knowledge how hurt people because I was training. And my mother always asked me, you lose or win? I say, I win. This is good. You know, because street <laughs> if, is different yeah, rules, yeah. you know? She all, all the time say, never come home if you lose, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, my mother, have she have good, but she don't like hurt people. But she knows, like, street is street. Yeah. You have to show your heart when you go to the street. Because, like, they don't have rules. They don't have rules. They don't yeah. have referee. They don't have security. No. Like no you rules. have to protect yourself all the time. You know, it's yeah. like street did, 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 you, did you have a lot of did you have a lot of street fights? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And like three a day. Damn. This is back in uh, Brownsville. No, I you never fight you, you three times. I know fight Mike's... one time, two times, but I never fight three times. Oh, every day though. Every day. Not like three times. I had three fights that day. I didn't have another fight like a month ago. I'm talking about it's every day. Did you ever did you ever get beat up, Mike? Yeah, I got beat up. Yeah. Did you know that? You know Mike you know Mike was bullied. Somebody killed his pigeon when he was uh in his early teens. It forced him to fight. He discovered the dream of him being a, yeah, a great boxer. Fighting. And then he, he know, discovered like, the sport of boxing. Though. About about bully, I think like everywhere around the world they have bullies. Like yeah. just you have to be ready. Never give up. It's okay if someone big and strong, stronger than than you, if he can beat you, it's okay. Like couple couple guys, of course they can beat one guy. Yeah. This is not news, you know. But what about your heart? If you give up, you yeah. know. Right. I'm gonna never keep coming up. back until I win. Yeah. I'm never giving up. Yeah. And those bullies get uh those those bull the guys that used to bully you, Mike. Once you started beating them up, did they treat you different? Or they just every time they see you, would they run? No, um, they want to be my friend. Yeah, they just yeah. befriend you. Uh, be my friend. But if you can't, you can join them. Yeah. Brooklyn. They want to be my friend and teach me how to rob and steal and stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, like in my, my village, like big guys, Yeah. when they see like small guys, like, like same age, same size, they say, hey, you're going to fight with him? They ask, you know, like, and all the time when they ask me, I say, hey, I'm going to fight if he accepts. But first, I don't want to go because, like, because I was training all my life. And yeah. I know, like, see, even when I was, like, seven, eight, I was, like, well-rounded, you know? It's like, yeah. I can wrestle, I can grapple, you know? You know when I was little, they don't say, yo, shorty, I got 20 bucks, you punch that kid in the head because they betting on us. Yeah. Okay. Bang, punch him right in the face. <laughs> He's my friend. Bang, right in yeah, the face. Split the money. The philanthropy now, uh, Khabib, with everything that you're doing now, obviously, I know you've, I think you've gone to Africa and, and have done a lot of things like that. Uh, but you've also, you're, you're starting your own promotion, man, which yesterday you did a good job with me and Zubaira. You met us. <laughs> hey, I want to wrestle, dude. I was, uh, I was delusional, Mike. But he instigated it. And I was like, dude, I took all my stuff. I was like, no, we're going, man. But now he has. It was a, like street fight. <laughs> like 30 minutes. But now talk about the Eagle promotion uh, company that you're starting, Khabib. Yeah, I have promotion like uh, like uh, we beginning like three years ago. Yeah, I was uh, like couple guys were their their owner, and last year I buy everything like I'm owner there, and I'm doing my by myself. You know, I control now everything. I'm owner, and uh, I think we have great future. You know, it's like from here, like. It's, uh August 3rd we have big show in Kyrgyzstan. I'm going to fly from here direct to Kyrgyzstan. August 3rd big... you said? I got, uh, August 3rd. August after August like 3rd. 5 5 6 days, you know. Oh wow. And uh, and uh, we have in Moscow couple show. August we have two show. September we have three show. October like uh, every month we have couple show and you know it's like we're doing very good job like what me motivate me to doing this uh, work with this uh, Promotion, like, I think I can, I give people good platform. Yeah. 
you know, to show, like, give, give for young generation good opportunity. Yeah. You know, when I beginning, it was like it's 2008. Hard. It's, it's hard yeah. to get fights, especially Eastern Europe, because you guys yeah. are so good, man. Yeah. People don't know that side of the yeah. world yet. They, 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 we have, like, a lot of young, like, lions, you know. Yeah. They just need opportunity, you know. Yeah, so you want to give back. And, uh, and from me, they, they can get opportunity. Like, they, if they fight in Eagle FC, like... Uh, Dana White or big promoters, they can see them, you know, because of me, because I get attention and uh, guys have big opportunity, you know. This is giving me good motivation, big motivation to doing this. Like, maybe not everyone gonna become great champions, but. But you're helping them because you struggled yeah, back in the day yeah. to get fights. No, I get it, man. I think that's. You know, uh, but people who, who don't become great champions in the ring become great champions in life. Yeah. They don't or they do? The ones that not necessarily do become successful in the ring, they become successful in life because the, the same tools you need in the ring, you need in life to survive. Yeah. Like, for example, Muhammad Ali. He was a great champion, but more than champion, he was like great human being, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's like... The greatest. Like, we, we have like a lot of great boxers, mixed martial artists. All of them are not yeah. great people. Yeah. Yeah, can we uh can we bring Ali Abdelaziz? You want to come over here? Come, come here, Ali. Come here, man. I want to I want I want to get I want to get your two cents, man, with everything it's and good. how how have you seen uh could be could be mature. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Sit, sit. Just talk with us. You've seen this man since the beginning, man. I think weren't you staying with? Wasn't he staying with you for a minute, Ali? In uh, uh to be honest, um, I, I met Habib, um, you know, through my brother Rizwan, who's here today. And uh, and when I meet him, I think he have a ACL, you know, ACL surgery. And he come, we meet, we go to California, and his English was zero, like back there, like he, yeah, he was talking to me. You know, yeah. he, like he's he's like now my English teacher. Uh, <laughs> and after that, like he have ACL for two years, he's kept getting injured, uh, uh, in, uh, knee surgeries, rib surgeries, back surgeries. And uh, and very much at one point he said, you know, I think you know, I'm gonna finish, you know, but I think uh, his father was such a great influence in his life. You know, he was he was a motivation in his life. He's the one always push him, inspire him, right? If father right now is is if alive, 100% happy we fight in George St. Pierre. You agree? I think so. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And um, no choice. And and, and I think. You know, and I and I, I being around him it make me a better person. You know, make me a better person. I was living my American dream, doing crazy things, like doing stuff I'm not supposed to do. I don't know, start hanging out with Habib, everybody. It make me become a better person. But back then when we met, I didn't have much money. I didn't have nice car. I didn't have anything, and he didn't have much too. You know. And I feel like we and grew, arrive together. We 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 kind of grow together, you know. This guy he make a lot of millionaires, you know. Um, and after that, you know, man, so do you, Ali. And, uh, you made a lot of millionaires too. Man. Nah, it it was just uh, it was just being an honor, such a such, such being a part of his life. And I wanna, I never told him this before. I wanna say uh, thank you for having me part of your life, and uh, and I love you. And uh, and you inspire so many of us, you know. And I really, I really mean it. Like I every, believe that, man. And uh, every time I see this guy, I'm happy. Now he's not fighting. With you know, Albert nothing. from Chetnia, Albert Red Hair. He's with Rand Dam sometimes. Chetnia and Red Hair. Yeah, maybe I know him. Albert. Yeah, maybe uh, I know him. Yeah, that's so crazy. Albert. Yeah. Albert. <laughs> I think Habib. He don't inspire. Like he inspired 1.7 billion Muslims around the world. You know. And, and I think know. a lot of our kids, a lot of like whole Muslim kids growing up, even not Muslim, you know, inspire. Everybody did business different in MMA. He did his own way, you know. He never changed. I know this guy when he have ten dollar. I don't know how much money he have now. He's the same, you know. And uh, and uh, and I very much I believe he's the greatest of all the time. Not only inside the cage, only outside the cage. And I know he's gonna smash me after this because he said, I don't want you to talk about me, promote me. <laughs> but this is the truth, you know. And uh, he changed a lot of us, all of us. And uh, and we're here today talking to my opinion. I think you're wrong. I love Muhammad Ali. And I said this before, but Mike Tyson is one of the greatest athletes, the most famous athlete 
we ever seen because Muhammad Ali have maybe two generations, right? Mike Tyson, 19 years old, no Mike, Mike Tyson, 30 years old, four years old, seven years old. And I think Mike Jan Tyson is different because seven different generation no Mike Tyson. Yeah. And uh and I just Mike has become like a phenomenon. It's not just a I'm just happy to be here with Henry. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Henry, me, Henry's working this show. That's it. All right, well Mike, you feel the same way though. But if you ask Mike, he'll always give gratitude to Muhammad Ali. You know what I'm saying? Because you are you are very humble, Mike. Yeah, People don't know that. Great you, man. You, you, you no, really I like man. Mike Tyson, but I think Muhammad Ali. Yeah, is, I yeah. agree with you. I what agree. do you think? I leave the game. You want to punch me? Yeah. No. <laughs> what I also I also no, I just think Ali. like Muhammad Ali, one step, one I step. I don't, I don't think my whatever it is that's serious. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah man. Any like, uh, uh, any closing thoughts here, Mike? What advice would you give to uh, to Khabib the time that we did have with him? Well, no, this is wonderful. You're sitting down talking to him. And, you know, he's not fighting no more. He's not thinking about fighting. So just be an entrepreneur. Help him out. Make him help make a lot of money. He can give it away if he doesn't really think much of it and stuff. That's what I do. I okay. give a lot of my stuff away. Yeah. A lot of people that need it. So even some animals. So, yeah, so even so, this is, this is business advice for him. Because you feel like typically when you do give advice, Mike, it's always like, you know... Well, if it's a business advice and for family, he should prepare for that. Yeah. You know, but um, I think he's most of my kids of... are cool and happy. And there's other kids that need to be cool and happy, too. Yeah. What about you, Ali? Anything, any uh, words for, for, for Khabib leading to the future now that he's retired? I think Khabib, he's, he's finished his sports legacy, you know. But I think now is continue a different legacy, a, a business venture. And one of the things, he's here. He's cornering guys making $10,000 a fight, you know, like stay away from his family two months, uh, take care of everybody. He's just doing it. Uh, he's he's continued the legacy of his father, you know. Yeah. And his father he put this in him. And now this is all his father's students, Zubaira, Islam, Omar, Usman. And now he's continuing. He keeping the legacy alive, the Nur Mahmadaf, uh family legacy alive. And uh, and a lot of people right now, they just want to go on a yacht and spend millions of dollars and stuff like that. No, it's, they want to help you spend your millions of dollars. <laughs> they don't go on the yacht and spend their money. No. They want to help you spend your money. No, yeah. but he's, he's here like cornering guys in, yeah. uh, in Bellator this weekend. And guys, they don't make much money. He's just here for the love of what he does. And this is his father. You know, this is his father. And he's continued the legacy of his father. I think that's what it is, and that's a violent thing to do. Yeah. I wish I had a legacy for my father to live. Yeah, I, I think for me, Habib is like, uh, obviously we're about the same age. I'm a couple years older than you. You know, coming from uh, freestyle wrestling, and uh, I, I know I know a lot of what you've gone through, even even retired now, your upbringing, you know, which, you know, where your father was always on you, you know, from... From everything, from being, you know, from Dagestan to the rivalry with Chechnya and all that. I know how you guys, uh, you know, all that. I just want to say, man, that uh, leaving 29 and 0, man, it, to, leaving 29 and 0, pound for pound, man, it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful, man, to leave a top. I don't think people recognize or realize that, how beautiful it is to leave on your terms, man. And uh, I just want you to close it out for the fans, man. There's, we're going to get millions of followers here, whatever it is that you want to, uh, to give to the people. I just want to say, you know, it's like this this game is like not for people or, you know, it's like for mental weak people, you know. This game is like for very tough guys, you know. It's like if you want to become champion, you know, you have to understand, like you have to sacrifice your time, your family, like, like your, like... Everything what you have, you have to sacrifice. This is about sacrifice. If you're not ready to sacrifice, you have to sit home. This is just my advice for young guys who want to become great champion, you know. And uh, patient, 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 hard work, sacrifice. Like without these things, doesn't matter how talented you are. This is not, not work. It's going to work when you're beginning. But when you go to the true, like, 
like this is not work you know you have to sacrifice everything what you what you have you know then you can become great champion yeah awesome well there we have it man yes, Khabib thank good. you for coming Mike any closing thoughts we good I just believe like you were saying um, this game is not for weak men but it can make weak men strong that's right it's like you either yeah exactly man exactly that's awesome. Guys, well man, it's been a pleasure. Awesome day Khabib, today. Could be Ali. I mean, this yeah. is this is this is legendary here, man. Yeah. So like, how could before we end here, I just want to know your thing, because remember you said you got nervous, you know, first time you had a mic. Uh how cool how cool was the experience now that you have a relationship? He with, came to uh, my house and just chilled out at the hat thing. Yeah. <laughs> how cool is man to to be able to like sit here and talk to Mike about your history? Living a legend, you know. Thank like, you, bro. It Thank was I, I have like you said this before when beginning uh, like you have dream meet with Muhammad Ali, like same thing. Before I have dream, like it was like three athletes for me is like who inspired me like crazy. It was like Brazilian Ronaldo, Mike Tyson, and Muhammad Ali. I meet two of them. Like I don't have chance to meet Muhammad Ali. You know, it's like I hope like next oh, you next love, life. Oh, you would have loved this guy, Muhammad Ali. Oh, you would have loved him. You would have loved this guy so much. So, I so much. Too. I really believe next life I'm gonna meet with him. Yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah. That's really awesome. Well, there you guys have it, man. You guys just watched an episode of Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson. I am your co-host, Triple C, a.k.a. Henry Cejudo. Mike Tyson in the house. Habib and Ali. And we <laughs> out. Yeah, what's this stuff? When she brought it up, Mike, we might as well have some. But check this out right here. It's Smart Cups, man. It's the world's first printed beverage, man. Would you like to try some? We love them. That's smart cheers. Cups. Smart Cups, man. Cheers, smart cups, man. Make you a smarter person. <laughs>